Next up, Felipe Enomoto from Japan against the man who is very well known in MMA in Southeast Asia from the Evolve Gym, Ole Larson from the Philippines. I can handle a lot of pressure, but I can give also a lot of pressure. That's what I do, you know. I don't like to lose. I'll come out and try to get the job done. I don't think this fight is going to go the distance. I'm trying to get the job done before time. Knockout, submission, it's not going the distance. Right now, I want nothing else more than winning and win against Ole. Nothing else. I want to win. Felipe, uh, he's a good fighter. He's climbing the, the ranks and he's trying to take my name in the process. So we're going to go out there and lay it all out and uh, I'm going to come down as the winner. For me, it's just fighting, going out there and go with the flow, you know? That's my strategy. I've been out for a year now, so this is my combat fight. I'm not nervous or anything. I just want to go out there and bang, so that's what I'm going to do. He is a pro, and he is a very seasoned and experienced fighter. He will be there. I love to fight for a big crowd. I'm ready to fight. I will give my best tonight, and uh, we will make a good fight. Yo, Felipe, good luck. You're going to need it. You want big? Well, this is huge. Felipe Enomoto. He wore this mask at the weigh-in. I don't know quite what the message is, but he lives and breathes mixed martial arts. He owns a gym in Switzerland, and he's been working out at Tiger Muay Thai in Thailand recently. And this is a colossal stepping stone for him at 1FC. A big opportunity. If he beats Ole Larsen, that is a big, big name in Asia on his list. Yeah, you can definitely steal some thunder. Ole Larsen's getting a lot of a lot of love on the internet and on the forums, being a really top prospect. And you know, Felipe knows coming into this that this is gonna be a tough fight, but he's very well traveled. I mean, he's competed in, in Germany, the Czech Republic, Russia, Japan, has nine years of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu experience, eight years of boxing, holds a cage fighter championship title in Europe. He knows what it's like to be in there with tough guys, and this is just another fight for him. He's not worried about fighting a prospect or fighting someone, you know, that, that's coming off of a year layoff. You say he's been in there with tough guys. There's stories going around that he was bitten by a crocodile recently. He's, he's kind of played that down when we chat to him. But, uh, well, if you can fight crocodiles, you can fight anyone, can't you? I would imagine. How does one get bitten by a crocodile? There's probably a good backstory there. And survive. How do you survive being bitten by a crocodile? I don't know. Anyway, looks as if he's about to do a bit of fighting himself there. Very, very good looking young man. I say young man, 29 years old, his record is five and three. And he really, really is in for a fight tonight. And this is the stepping stone. If you need a stepping stone in this sport, fight Ole Larson on one FC. Win that, the world's your oyster. Much loved, much admired. Ole Larson, 34 years old, and here's the story with him. He's been out for a year, and he had to lose a bunch of kilos in the 12 hours before the weigh-in. His metabolism wasn't right, and his corner are not confident about how this will turn out if we enter the second and third rounds. Well, weight cutting is, is definitely something that you have to look at when you're, you're dropping weight. And, and coming off of a, a year layoff, too, that can really affect how their cardiovascular performance is going to be when you go into those later rounds. But, you know, Ole Larson is a world-class Muay Thai fighter and kickboxer. He's, he's transitioned to MMA, has a fantastic base, been working diligently on his wrestling and his jiu-jitsu. And, you know, when you fight a guy like Ole Larson, you know that if you can't take him down, you're going to be in for a very long night because he hits hard and he hits it's fast. Well, I asked him late afternoon, how do you feel? And he said, I feel strong. 
he looks mean, he looks strong. There's nothing wrong with that body of his, is there? But how tough will it be for him to go beyond a round, having had to lose all that weight? He did make weight, but it was a close thing. He had to drop his trunks and get weighed with a couple of towels around him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. This lightweight contest is brought to you by Carl's Jr. Our judges for this fight are Perry Pantau of Indonesia, Josh Robinson from Singapore, and Julian Abaketa of the USA. This contest is scheduled for three rounds of five minutes, and when the action begins, our referee in charge of the cage is Matthew. And now, live from Mahaka Square Sports Mall, Jakarta, Indonesia, this is the main event! Well, introducing first out of the blue corner, this man is a CFC Euro Champion, standing at 180 centimeters, weighing in at 70.3 kilograms, with a professional MMA record of eight wins and three losses. Fighting out of Inamoto Dojo from Japan, Felipe Inamoto! And his opponent, fighting from the red corner, he is a MC champion and world champion, standing at 176 centimeters, weighing in at 70.3 kg, with a professional MMA record of five wins and two losses, fighting out of Legacy Gym, representing the Philippines, Ole Iron Fist Tell me, Jason, apart from the last time you looked in the mirror this morning, when did you see a set of abs like on Ole Larson? Uh, you haven't looked in my mirror lately, brother. <laughs> He's in shape. Here's the tail of the tape for you. 29 years old, plays 34. Four centimeters taller, Enomoto. And although they weigh the same, remember the story, Larson had to drop a load in the hours judge, before we started. Judge, judge, timekeeper. Ready, fight! The tap of hands before the action starts. A vicious left hook followed by a right from Larson. He wants to get this over early. That's the tactic. And clubbing left and right, so much so that his momentum means his glove has to touch the ground. Left and right again from Larson. It's desperate stuff. Smashing right hand from Larson. That momentum is so crazy, he's nearly falling over. This fight is brought to you by Carl's Jr. And what a fight it's starting out to be already. Desperate from Larson. He doesn't want this to get into the second round. And he's throwing with really heavy hands. And even, look at that, he just caught him with a, a glancing shot and he dropped him. I think Inamoto might have been going back and perhaps caught off balance, but that was, that was no soft blow. Ole Larson is a world-class um, Muay Thai striker. I mean, you have to know that if you're standing with him, you're going to take some shots, and even shots that are glancing can be very, very dangerous. I have never seen Ole Larson fight with a sense of urgency quite like this. Ole has to be careful that that left leg doesn't shoot up straight, or he may be in danger of a triangle choke. It's going to be interesting to see how he's made the transition into MMA, finding himself in the open guard here, if he's going to be able to work the pass or just throw some ground and pound. You have to think if there would be a weakness in Ole's game, it would be on the ground. He certainly looked keen to... Uh, oh, my! That punch came from way back. I'm not sure that it landed cleanly. I think Enomoto may have just got a, a glove in there between the punch and the face. He sent a signal that it was coming, that's for sure. Forearms to the head by Enomoto. 
And Enomoto is working some Eddie Bravo rubber guard here, holding his leg up high. That actually accomplishes a couple of things. It keeps Ole from being able to posture up and throw those big shots. And also, he's able to set up a bunch of different submissions from there. He can bring his foot around the top of Ole's head and bring it in front of his face and look for a uh, an umoplata. He can feed his arm through for the triangle. Elbows to the head, so absolutely no leverage at all for, for Larson in this position. It's, it's like having an anaconda hug your body when you have someone that's, that uses rubber guard very well. An anaconda who can throw the odd elbow into the top of the head as well by the look of it. And in come the punches. Not so heavy, but they'll be scoring points and they'll do some damage with the accumulation. Well, the, the one thing that, that he has to worry about here is if Enomando's on the bottom and he's not being very active, he may get stood up, which might not be a place he wants to be. Looking for the stab there, Larson. Got hold of that left ankle and he was kicking viciously. Again. Oh, great takedown. Again, the signs that Larson wanted to finish this quickly, quickly, but was he being too hasty? You speed things up, then the risk of errors comes in. This is definitely where Philippe wants to be, on top of a striker on the ground. Nice There's knee. blood, there's blood on Larson's back, Jason. We don't know where that's coming from. Possibly Enomoto's nose. Oh, that's a deep guillotine. Oh, that is really deep. Oh, what strength. Oh, that was deep. He's going for the one-arm in guillotine now, but you saw in the face of Ole Larson there that there was a little bit of trouble. Can he wriggle out of this? Well, you know, at this point, having a one-arm guillotine like like Philippe has here, it, it takes a little bit of the pressure off of your opponent's neck, but you can still finish from this position if it's in deep enough. It looks like Ole may be in some trouble here. It's in pretty deep. And he's been in there for some time now. Must be exhausting. Well, it's also tiring on your arms to hold a choke that long sure, if you don't yeah. get it. So that, that can wear on you later on down the fight. Open and he's gone out of it. Oh, oh now Ole's taking his back. What a switch. Well, one arm, both arms come free now, and he resorts to the punching. Well, for a second, he had a very effective hold on his opponent, Ole Larson. Ole is really showing his, his versatility with, with the jiu-jitsu game here, and he's really developing into a fantastic mixed martial artist. And you can see why he's ranked the number eight prospect in the world at his weight class. Sure, and what an all-action contest this is for the number eight prospect. Clearly, he's been recognized on a global scale. And to a degree, there's an element of make or break in this fight for him. If he wants to break away from being a mere prospect to the world's best, he has to get through this fight. But he's, uh, he's going to make it, certainly, into a second round, which is territory. We know he did not want to get in. Ole Larson had hoped to finish that fight in the first round. And from here on in, Enomoto can take a degree of confidence that he's on home territory. Some fantastic exchanges in this fight. You saw Ole throwing some big right hands and the foot stomps. It's great back and forth action. And at one point, it looked like Ole may have been in trouble with the guillotine. Right here, that guillotine was in really deep. I think the only thing that Felipe missed was being able to get guard to get the extra leverage, but you know, Ole, very good sense about being on top. Moves beautifully from the mount to the back position there. Excellent performance. I'm very impressed with this groundwork so far. That was an outstanding five minutes of action. And fortunately for us, it looks as if we may get around five more, possibly even 10. What a thrill for the fans here in Jakarta. Enomoto from Japan in the black trunks against Ole Larson. I guess I'd describe his trunks as snakeskin. Maybe he was going for that whole crocodile hey, thing. Fight. Possible. He said a crocodile put him in trouble once. Let's see if he can do it again. Oh. That was a vicious leg kick, Ole. You don't want to eat a lot of leg kicks. You know, you, you hear the, act, the people talk about, I'm going to beat you up. Well, that actually comes from wanting to take a fighter's base out. You hit a few leg kicks, you're not going to have anything to shoot with or stand with. Good right hand from Ole Larson, and he's nodding at his opponent. Yeah, you want more of that? Come and get it, he's saying. Go for the elbow as well. Short, short, and quick elbows. And Enomoto's face has taken a pummeling in the last 25 seconds. 
I like the look of Larson in the first 45 seconds of this contest, and he started this second round well also. Good sweeping leg work. Yeah, Ole is putting together some very good combinations. I mean, you can you can see the difference in a striker who, who you know, is just starting to strike. For instance, a jiu-jitsu guy who's who's coming in, and a guy like Ole Larson who's sitting on his punches, has great head movement. And those kicks are solid and clean. There's a lot of power behind them. Very reluctant to take a backward step, the Filipino. Sometimes he gets pushed back, but he's straight back in again. And that right hand, another good short right hand to the Japanese chin. You know, Philippe, uh, he really needs to start checking these leg kicks or it's going to be a short night for him as far as his base is concerned. I don't see much evidence of Larson slowing down in this second round. As they stand up, it's Ole Larson who looks the most impressive fighter to me. Ole Larson is, just, is a guy who just loves to fight, you can tell. When he gets in your face, throws some punches, wants oh. to engage. He's a, he's a fighter's fighter. You have to like watching this guy fight. Time. Now. Uh, Enomoto may have had a finger in the eye there. He called the referee for a bit of time. Matt Hume didn't spot it originally, which is fair enough. What's the rule here, Jason? What happens? Well, usually a fighter can take up to five minutes to recover from a blow if it's unintentional. Uh, if the referee deems it's intentional, which obviously this wasn't, they, they may deduct the point, but well, they're good to go right away, so it couldn't have been that bad. Well, if Larson is struggling with uh, stamina, then that will have done him some good. Bit of respite. In they come again. He likes that jab, Ole Larson. I suspect he's got the shorter reach of the two, but the speed of his jab creates a good advantage. Having said that, we're seeing a succession of left, right, left, right from Enomoto, and they're scoring, and that was a good right hand from the Japanese that fighter. A, that was a really nice right hand over the top, Larson's word. This is his game. You can tell he loves oh, this. That kick is brutal, isn't it? Enomoto's left leg is going to be sore tomorrow, and I bet it's pretty sore now. Wonderful to watch these two exchange good punches, and that was a solid, solid left jab from the Filipino. Landed flush on the nose of the Japanese fighter, which I suspect is already quite badly wounded. There's blood streaming from those nostrils. Left, right, left, right for the Japanese. Unanswered blows. Larson smiling at him, generating applause and cheers from the crowd here. These two are loving it. Larson's gum shield has come out. Time. Matt Hume picks Time. it up. Beg your pardon. And a mo no, it was Larson's gum shield. You don't want two in there, do you? Yeah, you don't want your opponents in there regardless if you even have one in there. Ole's doing a really good job of working to the body and the head. You know, Philippe's having some success throwing that one-two and that overhand right, but He's got to be careful because uh, he's getting his hands back a little slow, and that gives Ole the, you know, a little counter time to throw some punches in. What a roller coaster ride of punching this is for the two of them. They're both giving and taking. Fantastic fight. Oh, oh he wobbled kick. him. Oh, he really needs to be on top of that. This could be it. The left kick from Inamoto, and now he's behind Larson. Jensen, oh, that's the deep. arms around the throat. This could be the end of it right here. He really rocked Larson with that punch. There was a little hesitation with following up, but Animoto, it's hard to see from this angle if that choke isn't deep, but it, it looks like it's in pretty deep. He's moving the arm away. Larson concentrating on getting the fingers away. Oh, it's all over. What an upset. My goodness me. Have you ever in your life seen a contest as furious as that? Enomoto walks away with blood on his face, but is victorious. Ole Larson has taken his loss with great pride and humility. What a contest we saw, as long as it lasted, begging for it to go even further. Jason, what do you make of that? Wow, I mean, that was a, a spectacular fight. Philippe putting together some fantastic combinations and then throwing that kick behind that right hand was, you know, a little short elbow there through the left, the right, and then he stepped in and threw that, threw that kick, and man, it just caught him right on the chin. You see here, nice uppercut. Right hand, and that kick was just right on the button. Well, Ole Larson has got enough goodwill in Southeast Asia 
to come back from that loss, particularly given the nature of the loss. It was furious, fast, and devilishly entertaining. But he comes out a loser. Felipe Enomoto takes all the rewards, and deservedly so. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Matt Hugh has called a stop to this contest at 3 minutes 49 seconds into the second round. The winner, after a tap out by a rear naked choke, in the blue corner, Felipe Inamoto! Okay, I'm here with your winner, Philippe Enemoto. That was a fantastic fight. What was your game plan coming in, knowing you were facing a striker of the caliber that Ole Larson is? My game plan was exactly what, we, what I did, is to fight with him. Because I know he's a real warrior, a real fighter. And the only way to, to fight a guy like this is to, to be a warrior by yourself, you know? And... Uh, all, all uh, my hats off to Ole. He's a, he's a machine. He's a warrior. Like I said before the fight. It looked like Ole was connecting with some really good shots to the body and a couple of kicks. Were those hurting you into the fight? Uh, uh, two times I was really hurt. Once from the knee. He gave me a very good knee to the body, and I think one right hand I felt also. But I was like, my brother hit my brother. Fight, fight, fight. Just believe in yourself and keep on fighting. You caught him with a fantastic kick that landed right on the chin. Talk us through the end of the fight there and how you saw that opening. I didn't saw the opening. This was my brother. He was screaming from the first round, high kick, high kick, go to the body, high kick. And that's what I did. I did a right uppercut and a left high kick. So all my brother just listened. It was a great fight. It was a fantastic performance. And we hope to see more. Ladies and gentlemen, Philippe Enemoto. Oh, what a contest that was. Unbelievable pace and dedication from these two. Ole Larson can come back, but we Ladies have a new star in Felipe Enamoto. If you've enjoyed 1FC2 here in Jakarta, don't worry, there's more to come. We're in Singapore next. The absolute epitome of mixed martial arts in Asia, 1FC3, 31st of March 2012. Singapore Indoor Stadium from Jason Chambers and myself, Steve Dawson. We'll see you next time.